Have you ever wondered whatever happened to the legendary Chuck Norris? I recently saw a video he made and I was shocked. He's in his 80s and he's still kicking butt and working out and staying active. And what's even more shocking is that he's stronger, he can work out longer, and even has plenty of energy left over for his grandkids. He did this by just making one change. He says he still feels like he's in his 50s. His wife started doing this one thing too and she's never felt better. She says she feels like she's 10 years younger, her body looks leaner, and she has energy all day. Chuck made a special video that explains everything. Make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com forward slash sub or by clicking the link in the video below. It will change the way you think about health. Once again, that's chuckdefense.com forward slash sub and click the link in the description below to watch the video now. You won't believe how simple it is. If you remember, years ago, we would do um, descriptions of systems on board ships and submarines, and that was called a whiteboard series. Well, we're bringing that back as a blackboard series now, using your feedback and your topic recommendations. Uh, this topic is going to be about torpedo tubes. Uh, a lot of you guys want to know how do torpedo tubes work. We're going to explain torpedo tubes in three different ways here today uh, for submarines and how surface ships uh, operate their torpedo tubes as a fourth way. So we're going to get right into it without any further delays. And we're going to draw the bow of our submarine. It's kind of a blocky bow. This is going to be a generic submarine. This applies to many different classes, nothing specific. Something to understand about torpedo tubes is they come in groups called banks. A bank of torpedo tubes is often two, three, or four in one bank. And then you'll have a bank on the port side and a bank on the starboard side. So you could have two and two, three and three and so forth. Uh, in today's example, we're just going to draw a bank of two torpedoes. Um, and this is kind of a side view. So imagine we're looking sideways at the submarine as it sits in dry dock uh, for now. Okay. So here are the two torpedo tubes in their bank. And we're going to go over the different parts of them. Let's start at the front and we're going to talk about what's called the outer door. Every submarine will have an outer door on every torpedo tube. The purpose of the outer door is simply to keep the hydrodynamic flow of water over the hull from going into the tube. It's not necessarily even watertight because we're not there yet. It's just to keep the water from going into the cavity that is the torpedo tube and causing drag, causing noise. It's simply a cover that is rigid and strong, but the watertight integrity part actually comes from another door that's sometimes right behind it called the muzzle door. The muzzle door is a strong steel watertight door that keeps water out of the torpedo tube. But it's not always at the front as I've drawn here. Sometimes this muzzle door will be feet back. So you'll have a gap here. And whenever you have a gap, between the outer door and the muzzle door, this could often be a free flood area between these two, but you must always leave some space for this door to rotate open, whether it opens like that. Uh, sometimes they could slide and come back that way uh, into the submarine itself. Uh, for uh, Russian type submarines, I've seen this door, the muzzle door and the outer door is attached as one. And in this case, it simply slides up. I've seen that. So different classes of submarine handle the outer door and the muzzle door different, different ways. As we're working our way back into the submarine, uh, there's a number of different valves and connections that we will get into. But since we're on the topic of the doors and keeping the water either in or out, let's do those first. So all the way at the rear end or the aft end of the torpedo tube, this is called the breech door. The breech door is another watertight integrity heavy, heavy, hydraulically operated or manually operated door that is uh, locked. And it's a very heavy door because you're going to have a lot of pressure inside this tube at different times. So inside these torpedo tubes, we want to do a couple things. Well, we want to put a torpedo in it, right? So, you know, back here, we're going to have a little torpedo stow, you know, so the, the torpedoes will come in from, from this direction, that's that torpedo getting ready to go in here. And we have to have a torpedo man, right? So we got to bring back our good friend, Leroy. Everybody remembers Leroy. He's happy to be back. He's like, hey, everybody. He's going to mess up all sorts of different things. Today, Leroy is going to be our torpedo man, loading our torpedo into this system. 
And so things are probably not going to go well for him. So if the torpedo tube is dry, uh, that's good. But we have different um, gauges around it, including like a visual gauge where you can look into the tube and verify visually that it is dry. And we'll put the torpedo into it. We'll assume that this torpedo tube up here is dry. And we will put a 53 centimeter torpedo into that torpedo tube up there. Now, Torpedoes do come in different sizes. You do have 65 centimeter, which is a very large torpedo, but most of them are 53 centimeter and they have to be that specific size of the torpedo tube for them to fit in there. Because if they aren't, you have to have like what's a, called a Sabo cover uh, around it so that it doesn't rattle around inside the um, inside the torpedo tube itself. There's also little mechanisms in here that will keep uh, the torpedo from rattling around, even if it's the same size as the tube, uh, basically, because you always want to have positive control of the weapon at all times. Even if it's outside the tube, inside the tube, you don't want it just sitting there. No, you got something holding it and all that. So we have that uh, holding the torpedo tube right there. Let's say it's dry right now. Well, how did it get dry? Well, one of the ways is, is we have a drain valve in this thing. So we have a valve right here that will just drain this water into a bilge. And now that we have a torpedo tube in there or torpedo in there, we want to close, close that valve. So each one of these will have a little drain valve right there. And they're, they're closed in this case. So if we want to shoot this torpedo, the next thing we have to do is put water in the torpedo tube. So where are we going to get that from? Well, we're going to get it from a tank inside the submarine. So we'll just draw a little connection right here and a connection right there. Uh, these are, this is a flooding system, a torpedo tube flooding system. We'll put water into the tube around, around the torpedo, even around this little area up there and down here as well. Okay. So now you've flooded the uh, torpedo tube with the weapon in it. Our submarine is submerged underway and water doesn't compress, but it can be pressurized because we're at depth. We know the pressure outside the submarine is higher than the pressure inside the torpedo tube. So how are we going to equalize that? Well, we do that with what's called an equalizing line. And so we're gonna have a, a pipe essentially that's gonna have a couple valves on it and that goes right to the outside of the submarine. Okay, in all cases, all submarines do it this way, no matter what country they're from. Um, they open up the valves, two of them at least, and will not much water is gonna flow between the outside of the boat and the torpedo tube at this point, because torpedo tube is flooded, but it will equalize the pressure of the water inside the torpedo tube with the uh, torpedo and with outside. Now that the pressure is equalized, we can do two things. We can open the outer door, which is what we're gonna do here. So the outer door is now gonna open. And the muzzle door if it's attached to the outer door, will open with it. But once the outer door is open and the tube is equalized down here at the bottom, we can open up this door now. So now we have muzzle doors open, outer doors open, the torpedo tube is flooded, and the torpedo is ready to go, ready to be launched. Oh, something I should mention that would happen before you open the outer doors is there is an electrical connection to the torpedo to the submarine so the fire control system can talk to it and get it ready, spin it up, things like that. Because this is a weapon that is guided, so it's got equipment in there that needs to be uh, warmed up, if you will, before it's ready to launch. But assuming all that's done, now this weapon is ready to go. And we're going to talk about the first way submarines launch torpedoes. Uh, the Germans love this method, but other nations do it as well. And that is an electrical start from the fire control system to the Amphenol cable that connects electricity to the weapon, that spins it up, that tells it where the target's going, tells it which direction to swim after it's launched. That same signal will start the electric motor and or it could be a thermal motor, but usually electric motor and tell it to leave the tube. And that's one way of doing it. That's called a swim out torpedo or a swim out launch. And that is very popular because it is very quiet. There's not a lot going on there. You just flooded the torpedo tube, you equalized it, you open the outer doors and the torpedo just swims out and does its thing. And there's a little wire that connects it back 
uh, to the torpedo. So something to think about is as the torpedo is swimming towards its target, and that can take 10 or more minutes, depending on how, how far the target is, there is a wire, sometimes a fiber optic cable, connecting the torpedo back to the torpedo tube. So you got to keep these doors open that entire time. Yeah. So what do you think the torp uh, what do you think the submarine can do with the doors open? I can't answer that question, but I want you to think about that. You know, what are the limitations of a submarine during that? All right, so let's back up. Let's bring the torpedo back inside here. Uh, we'll leave the tubes uh, equalized and flooded because we don't need to do that again. But there's two other ways to, to launch this weapon. And that's what we're gonna talk about down here at the bottom. Let's say, let's, let's load a second torpedo into this bottom one here. Say the muzzle doors are shut, the outer door is shut. Um, torpedoes in here, just like so. 53 centimeter torpedo. Um, okay, we load it up, we're gonna flood it. Let's put the water in the tube and the tube just goes right here because there's the muzzle door, right? This, this area is kind of already flooded out, but we just flooded this manually. We make sure the drain's closed, the, uh, the, the, the flood line is open. We make sure the equalization line is open. And so this thing is flooded and equalized, but what we have here, what we did not use for the first launch, but it's installed anyway, are valves called slide valves. One of the reasons why they're called slide valves is in order to open them, and this is on the torpedo tube itself, not the torpedo, okay? Uh, you slide the cover to the side and it opens up these large gaps in the torpedo tube itself where water can go in to the rear end of the tube, the aft end of the tube, pushing whatever's in that tube out the front. So where does that water come from? Great question, I'm here to tell you. Let's go here, this is actually part of the submarine. So around the tubes, we have what's called water round tube tanks, WRT tanks. Um, this is just a large tank uh, full of a lot of seawater that just sits there and is ready, it's not pressurized or anything, it's just at room temperature, room pressure of the submarine surface you know, pressure. And it's just a lot of water getting ready to move into this, into this uh, tube whenever these slide valves are opened. But there is more to this system. What is gonna move the water? How's it gonna be pushed? You have to push a large volume of water in a very short time if you wanna move something as big and heavy as a torpedo out the front of the tube. So you have to have what's called an impulse tank. So an impulse tank, we're just gonna draw it up here. These can be in different locations on different submarines. Again, this is just a general description. Connecting this water round tube tank to um, is, is an impulse tank. And inside this impulse tank are the two other ways to launch a weapon. Let's go with the, the modern way, the, the more recent ways. In here, there's a turbine. It looks like a little propeller, uh, but it's a little, more <laughs> a little more involved than that. But think of a propeller or a turbine on your jet engine is gonna be one of the ways that we can push water from this impulse tank, which is right here. There's water in here, okay? And this turbine begins pushing at a very high rate of RPM, forces the water into here, forces the water that's already in here. This water wants to go somewhere. Where's it gonna go? Where's, you know, it's going around this tube. These slide valves are, are shut, but let's say we've opened up these slide valves here. So all the water is gonna come from the impulse tank to the WRT tank, and then into the rear end of this torpedo tube, pushing our torpedo out the front, just like that. So impulse tank, WRT tank, water round tube tank into through the slide valves, pushing whatever's in the torpedo tube out the front of the torpedo, okay? Uh, this is more mechanical, this is more reliable, um, in my opinion, than doing it the other way. It's also a little more noisy. So those are two ways to launch a torpedo. You can do it electrical, just hit the button, off she goes, uh, hit the uh, shoot button <laughs> and uh, spin up the turbine and push water through it that way. Uh, another method that is very similar to this, and so we're just going to quickly, um, you know, take that off. Let's see if I can redraw that real fast. Inside this impulse tank, there's another way of doing it besides a turbine, and that's called a piston. And so here you'll have basically a piston, just like in your engine, you know. 
And so what they'll do is they will have a piston that's at ready or static, and they will force, um, they'll be mechanically linked to another tank here that has air in it. And they will use high pressure air to mechanically push this piston forward where there's water, pushing water into this tank. The water wants to go somewhere because it's increasing pressure. It needs to go somewhere. If we open up these slide valves, it'll push this torpedo out the front. Same as the turbine. Turbine spun up, pushed it out. Piston uses air to mechanically move a, a metal piston that actually physically pushes the water through. Just a different way of doing the same thing. But each one of these methods makes noise. And so, like I said, some countries prefer other one method over another, just know that that's three ways right there that a submarine can launch a torpedo. And uh, little Leroy's can be happy there. Now, what do they do after they launch the torpedo? I, I told you the, 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 the cables connected to the torpedo, the torpedo swims for however long hits or misses the target doesn't matter. Uh, but we got to cut that cable, right? So that's what Leroy is going to do now is he's going to cut the cable to the torpedoes that have left the tube. And that cable is going to go right outside the front. You can actually hear it happen. It makes noise as you do it. Once that cable is gone, we're going to shut both the outer door and the muzzle door or yeah, muzzle door. Of course, the breach door is already shut. We're going to close these equalization lines that are right here. Make sure these are closed. And then we're going to, once that's done, and this tube is still pressurized, by the way, to outside pressure, we need to drain the tube. And so we're going to open up these drain lines and drain the water out of the torpedo tube. Okay. Now that the water is drained, the slide valves are closed. We have what's called a dry tube. Leroy's going to stick his head through a little sight glass and visually verify that there is no water level whatsoever inside this tube. Once that's done, Leroy can then open up the breach door here. That's this door and load another weapon. And that is a full cycle of shooting a torpedo tube three different ways in a submarine. Now let's talk about how they do it on surface ships. Cause that's really cool too. The fourth and final way we're going to talk about how torpedoes are launched is now with surface ships. And this is pretty universal among all ships because it's a very easy, effective, almost failure proof, literally way of doing it. And it is to use compressed air. There's no need to flood down, equalize all the complicated things that submarines need to do. All these guys need to do is eat this little sucker right here into the water somewhere in this direction. And the way they do that is with this little canister right here. That is a compressed air canister that the sailor's lifting up there. Um, he's getting his little workout on. This thing is compressed to thousands and thousands of pounds. And what they'll do is they will load this torpedo manually, like with their hands, because this is a lightweight torpedo. Looks like a Mark 46, might be a Mark 54. Uh, either way, it's a war shot, though. <laughs> They're going to put this thing in here. And then this ball that this guy's holding right here is going to go onto the back. And whenever they hit the fire command from wherever, CIC, or it can be done locally as well, uh, all the air that's in that sphere is going to be released all at once. And the only direction it has to go is towards the front. Cause this door right here, this door is going to be open. I wonder which one of these guys is called Leroy. You guys can put that in the comments. Yeah. Anyway, so this is how surface ships do it. It's, it's a very easy way. Uh, the torpedoes are so light. They can be, um, even though they are maneuvered with a crane, that's what this thing is right here. Uh, they can be handled manually and pushed into the tube and so forth. And then they're simply pushed out with compressed air. And we're going to show you a quick video of what that looks like. It's pretty cool. Hey, Aaron from the future here. While editing this together, I realized this would be a great moment to say, as my last will and testament, I wish to be buried at sea in this method. Put my carcass in this tube, I'll pressurize it to about 6,000 pounds, and send my ass into the deep blue oblivion.
Just a reminder, the legendary Chuck Norris is a whopping 81 years old and has yet more energy than me. He discovered he could create dynamic changes to his health simply by focusing on three things that sabotage our body as we age. Watch his method by clicking on the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, check out the introduction into submarine warfare right here.